what's going on okay hi guys hi, everyone <laughs> the countdown to start and i hadn't pushed live so that was a little bit embarrassing um welcome to the photographer's journey series to inspire you guys to keep going to realize that you're not on your own on your photography journeys with your ups and downs that we all get and we have the amazing natasha here today to chat to you all and i cannot thank her enough for giving us the time um i'm gonna pop on her website at the bottom there so if anybody wants to go check it out um she has so many amazing things going on how are you doing I'm all right, just busy, busy, just come back from the gym, so hence the hat, hairs are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing though, you do the gym like so much compared to I me. Try. <laughs> I try, I try and do it like at least four times a week and I try and go five times if I can, but it's not always possible like with the kids and work and stuff, but yeah, it's kind of like I was in such a bad mood this morning because I thought I wasn't going to be able to go. Um, and I was just literally like, I can't, I can't cope. But I managed to go and I was like, thank God I'm in such a better mood now. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it, when you get into the fitness train and things like that makes such a difference. Yeah, especially when you're so busy, like with me, like every minute of my life is pretty much planned. And if I'm like planning something out and then I can't get to do something or someone throws a curveball in or can you just send me this, do this, honestly, it just messes me up so much because... Like, as I said, like literally my life is planned down to the last minute and um, yeah, it's just a bit mad. So yeah, I just want to follow my routine and make sure I get things done. My brain is always on overload. So when something happens that not supposed to, it, it can really affect me. So yeah, like being able to go to the gym and have those couple of hours to work on myself really helps. <laughs> I just, I'm not a gym person, unfortunately. I love exercise, but just not the gym. I just, I, I hold my hands up to you when I see the stuff you get up to. I really do. You know what? Um, I never used to exercise before kids. Like, I never used to exercise. Like, I'd done dancing my whole life. And, like, when I finished school and stuff, I stopped doing it. And I just kind of, I don't know. Like, I think that after I had kids, like, it was pretty much the only thing I could have done to, like, kind of get that time back for me. So I just got into it. And then when I started lifting weights, I realized how like how strong and powerful it made me feel. And so, yeah, so that's why I carry on doing it because I'm just getting stronger. It's not even about weight or like anything anymore. It's literally going there and just getting stronger. And that definitely, it's, it's literally changed my whole life. So I definitely advise it to anyone, but it's just getting in the habit of doing it. I think that's the problem. So a lot of people just say they don't have the time and you probably don't, but you probably do. Do you know what I mean? You just got to try yeah. and get into it. And yeah. That hour you spent scrolling on Facebook, you could have been yeah. in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even about, like, you don't even have to like really do anything crazy. It's just about achieving little goals. And I think that for people like us that are so busy and we're so emotional and sensitive and passionate about our work, like having that little outlet is just amazing but it could be anything it could be like drawing or you know like if you like to sew like just anything just taking that couple of hours you know a few times a week for yourself is just so important you know? I think yeah if you don't you just you do what I did several years ago and end up having a bit of a meltdown mm. um when you don't do stuff like that and yeah. you know that's the problem I'm just sharing yeah. our live across some more screens while I'm doing yeah. it here so I want to hear about how you got into photography. Okay, so like I've um, pretty much like done photos my whole life. My mum took a lot of photos of us when we were young, kind of always had a camera in our face, like video camera, camera, anything. And um, so it was really normal for us to like be documented, I suppose. And um, obviously it helps with memories and things as well. Like my husband really doesn't remember much about his childhood or anything because his mom didn't really take that many photos. Whereas we have so much video and photo evidence of us. It kind of brings everything back, which is like obviously really special. Um, but I mean, I was always a singer, songwriter, like performer. Um, that's what I did. And that's what I thought I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. Um, since the age of about three or four, I've been on stage. I went to theatre school when I was um, 11, got a scholarship to a singing scholarship to a theatre school in London. So I spent like my high school years like running around London with crazy people and like, you know, <laughs> going to auditions and being in films and being on stage and stuff. So that was all I ever thought that I would be doing. 
Um, but yeah, like because I was away from home, I like really missed like being at home. So I didn't stay in London after school. I came home instead of going to college um, and tried to like make it in the industry myself. But it just like never happened. And it was just like a massive it was basically just being disappointed constantly. That was literally my life, like being told you weren't good enough and you'd go to auditions and then you wouldn't get them. And then they'd, it was just literally my whole life was work really, really hard and you can make it, but that just never happened. And I think I just lost it. So when I was like 23, I was like, I literally cannot do this anymore. Um, so yeah, so I kind of, I, I basically got a record deal and it all fell through and um, I'd left my job because they told me to leave my job and then it just, I had nothing. All I had was this camera and like a white background and a couple of lights that I had stored away somewhere. Um, and I just had, I couldn't pay my bills or anything. I had nothing. I had no money. Like, and I was just like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? So I just set up this white background. It like it went halfway into my mom and dad's kitchen in the living room. And I just started like photographing for like 50 quid. And it just like got really busy within like four weeks. And then eventually my mom and dad said, look, you're going to have to go and get a studio because we can't keep running upstairs, you know, with the dogs and your sisters while you photograph all these people in our house all the time. It just got mental. And I mean, I wasn't even that good, like, Obviously, I just had a passion for it. And it was like more like a passion for people and making them feel good. And that's kind of where my expertise lied at the beginning. Um, I got this like little studio in like a really rundown place. You know, one of the market um, like market places where like you have like a barber's and you have like a butcher's and like selling cheap clothes and cakes at a cafe like in Dudley Town Centre. And if anyone knows Dudley Town Centre, it is like it's rough right and, and my studio was upstairs in there but I was there for four years and so like that's where I really grew and um you know just kind of I got lighting training um I went on like a little newborn course and it really helped and and then when I got pregnant I just realized that there was nothing really out there for pregnant women and like me, I mean, I've always been very glamorous and outgoing and wanting to like, you know, have that sex appeal and feel good about myself. And I just felt like there was nothing like that. I was like, there's nothing out there for us. Like, I want to wear my red lipstick and I want to put on a red lace dress and I want to be sexy pregnant. Like, why can't we? Like, what's the problem? And I've always been like um, a feminist. I've always wanted, you know, like men and women to be equal and but still keeping that feminine side of us. And you know what I mean? Like, I've always wanted that and try and find a good balance. And so that's when it all started, really. And then, yeah, it just kind of kicked off. And I just got this style and it just grew from there and it just got a bit out of control. And then now you just can't stop me. <laughs> so, yeah, and I just feel so proud, really, that I've inspired so many people to do the same thing. And, you know, honestly, it's been hard, like knowing, you know, like a lot of people are so inspired. They literally like copy the photos like completely down to a T. And I used to find that really, really difficult. And everyone would be like, oh, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. But, you know, to me, I was like, you're stealing my identity. Like I used to take it really personally. I did. Like, I'm not going to lie. Um, but now I'm just like, you know what? It's just as if people out there are, are getting the confidence because of me, and they're giving confidence to other people like that's the most important thing so yeah so now i'm just like really proud of like what i've built and i feel like i've got this little army of like you know goddess creators and you know honestly it's just amazing so i am really thankful and grateful um for all the support as well because if it wasn't for like the support of like other photographers and my clients i really wouldn't be where i am today so yeah like it's just a big community thing i suppose so it's it's amazing well, I think it's amazing. Honestly, it, the, your work is beautiful. It is so oh, stunning. And it's funny, isn't it, how we all go through those years at the beginning where we don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. And we yeah. don't know who we're going to become as a photographer. So don't feel panicked about rushing into having to know the type of photography you are within a year. No, and you you're don't have to know what everyone else is either. Like, I, wasn't, I didn't do what everyone else did. And I got told so many times, like, that you couldn't make a business just out of photographing this. And, you know, you had to do newborns and you had to do cake smash and this is where you were going to make your money. But 
it's just not the case. I mean, if you're pa so passionate about something and, you know, you stick to your guns, you can literally make a business out of anything because there are people in the world that will appreciate it. And it's about trying to find those people that love what you love. Do you know what I mean? And not everyone's going to like my work. Not everyone's going to like me as a person, but that's absolutely fine. You know what I mean? I know I'm not for everybody. And I'm, I'm glad about that because I like, you know, being different and I like having this niche and you know that's what makes me special to the people that like me you know to other people i'm probably just like they probably think i'm nuts but that's absolutely fine <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you're nuts if it helps yeah, I love <laughs> at it. all that's what, that's what makes me good. i love the fact you're so busy that it makes me feel exhausted <laughs> And I look at your stuff and I'm like, I'm tired. It's my brain. Like, it's my brain. Like, when I know, like, I've got an evening off, I'm like, no, 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 I've got to do something. Like, I just cannot stop. And, you know, it's a bit of a blessing and a curse at the same time. But I suppose that's the same with everything. And, you know, like, if I haven't got something to do, I'll be like, right, I'm going to do this. I mean, the problem is that when you've got your own business, like, people will, people will message me and be like, oh, um, do, do your... I can't wait to come and be photographed by your team. And I'm like, team? What team? It's me. It's me. Like, me and the kids' nursery in school. That's that's my team. You know, obviously, I'm my husband. But, you know, like, it really is just me. Like, it's me that answers all the emails. It's me that does all the editing. It's me that sets the studio up. It's I, I am everything, you know, in this business. <laughs> it's just me. And I think that's at the same, like, probably mostly across the board as well. And I think that we just don't appreciate ourselves enough, you know? This is why, like, if I can't get to the gym, I get angry because it literally is the only time I get for me. Like, it literally yeah. is the only time. So, you know, it's very important for me to go and do that. So I'll never choose anything over it, <laughs> ever. No, I can get that. And that is almost the time where you get to take your brain break, isn't it? Mm, because you yeah. need a brain break. Mm, definitely yeah. definitely it's like concentrating on getting stronger <laughs> you know so uh, feel free guys by the way to put any comments or any questions and things you have it uh, will pop up so I can see them so please do that and I will ask away let us know where you're listening from all of the fun things because it's always nice to hear that as well so what would you say was the real turning point for you? Was it deciding your niche, finding you loved? Yeah, I mean, I everything. I mean, I started off photographing weddings. Um, I'm a people person. And, you know, that kind of seemed like the the right thing to do at the time. You know, I had friends that were getting married, so I like, kind of practiced on them. And you know what? Like, it, it's not easy photographing a wedding, but I found it like the actual, like, posing part of it and figuring out what you were going to do and you know just the whole day was easy like when I figured out like I only needed two lenses for example like when I figured out I needed two cameras so I didn't have to keep changing the lenses over like um I figured out like how to get the best out of people like that's obviously when it became very easy and weddings for me were an amazing starting point because I was able to network with a lot of people you know like it's a very family orientated thing a wedding so you were getting people there that had kids or you were getting people there that were pregnant or you know like you know all of that kind of thing so and there's lots of times at a wedding where there's there's nothing really for you to do as a photographer you know you're kind of hanging around you've got all your shots you know you don't want to keep photographing the same thing and so it's a real good like time to talk to people and be like oh yeah this is what I do and you know I do weddings abroad or I can do cake smash or I do this you know like whatever you want to do it just felt like it was a really really good like thing to start with um and I really really enjoyed it it just became too much. I mean, I ended up like obviously getting really good at my studio stuff and like knowing that that's what I wanted to do. And the weddings, I mean, I was doing like 30 weddings a year as well as all my other studio stuff. I just, honestly, I don't know how I'm alive sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's what I was doing. And I was delivering them in six weeks. I just, I just honestly don't know how that was crazy. But, I yeah. see some of your energy. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, honestly. Like, I don't even drink caffeine. So I, don't... I was just about to ask you, do you drink caffeine at all? Drink... No, like, I used to be obsessed with Coca-Cola. And like, honestly, after I had my second kid, I had to give it up because I was like, when I started addicted, addicted. Like when someone has like a can of Coke or Pepsi, I can smell it and I want it. I just can't allow myself to have it because I used to drink like six cans a day. It's so bad. Like I had to yeah. give that up. But yeah, no, I just drink water and milk. 
Oh, and cider at night, obviously, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good going. I, I'm even more impressed now you've told me you're not running off of caffeine. No, I know. I just don't like coffee or tea, really. I only I drink a cup of tea when I want to be an adult. When I'm around other adults and they all order a cup of tea, I'm like, oh, I'll have a cup of tea. But I just I don't like, really enjoy it as much. As, <laughs> so, yeah literally just adulting <laughs> just yeah i don't do ad what's adulting no I, don't really know, yeah. I still feel like i'm 18 so <laughs> i don't think we age like we do but i don't think we do in our brains i know i haven't been no. for about four weeks and i've been really sad about that so <laughs> i'm like please please id me id me I like that. Well, it was mine was my my thirtieth. I got ID'd. I got ID'd during lockdown as well. That was good fun. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I did enjoy that. Very sad. Yeah. They only do it to make me feel good now. Like, I'll wait for your post that says that you've suddenly been ID'd again in yeah, the next couple of nice. days. It would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> I've got um, a Kate saying you're an amazing, very positive and such an inspiring person. So oh, thank you. we've had That's some beautiful amazing. comments coming up already. Oh, um, and Baron asks, you seem to have a huge number of maternity dresses. Do you have to do you have a go to in terms of style and colour? So is there something that. Is well, your go -to. firstly, you don't need as many dresses as me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, remember, I didn't start off with all those, and I've been photographing maternity. Like, I bought my first dresses, like, seven, like six, seven years ago. So if you think that, like, how long that I've had them for, you know, like, I've built up a collection, and, um, you know, I actually don't really buy dresses anymore. I, I only ever end up buying a couple of new dresses when I start getting my repeat customers. And I think, God, I've got all the same stuff again. Do you know what I mean? So, like, that's kind of the only time I buy them. Like, I think someone asked me before, like, if I had a budget monthly to buy stuff for the studio. But I don't because I don't really buy anything anymore. Um, but also what everyone needs to remember is that because my social media is quite, like, busy and you know dressmakers do send me stuff now and so like you don't need to buy that meant that many dresses i would say that um like i don't buy that many dresses i get stuff sent to me i don't want to say that like in a big-headed way because i know that it can come across quite big-headed but like that's why i have so many it doesn't at all as you grow bigger yeah you say so people I would say, honestly i would say like style like you need to cater to your audience and I would say that because I do a lot of motherhood sessions and I do family sessions, um, I needed a white dress and I needed something that was going to be able to, you know, almost act as a backdrop for the floor photos and stuff as well. So um, I bought like a big white dress and honestly, it was the best purchase I've ever made in my life. It looks amazing on everyone. It looks great for family sessions, maternity, everything. And it, like, it, it's my most used dress. So I always say a white dress is good mainly because I love shooting on my white backdrop. So like obviously white on white, I love like tones to be the same um, and that works well. But also because if I do a family session, the most common shirt that a guy brings is a white shirt. And I would say that like white is quite hard to shoot. You have to be very, very careful that you don't like overexpose and things like that. But I would say that like for me, white works so well because my photos aren't white, if you know what I mean. Like I don't like do high key white photos. It's more like it's more like a light grey, but obviously the white dress works really well. So I would say that I would I would definitely invest in a white dress that's gonna fit like the majority of your clients. Um I would also say it's great to have um lots of material so if you're going to be doing um like maternity um, or mommy and me having material is actually more beneficial than having dresses because you can just turn the material into dresses if you get like between four and six meters of material you literally can just tie it around and you've got a dress you could put like you could do it like almost like an alternate and get like a cheap belt and put it around the middle and then you've got a dress you could put it over the side and then you've got a dress do you know what i mean like there's so much stuff you can do and you know it's also going to fit everybody as well which is great um for dresses i did just see brian that you said what size you tend to buy i normally buy like between medium and large like a medium large um just because if it's too small if it's too big then i'll just tie it up with hair bands i literally normally have these all down my arm so i just tie them at the back with hair bands and things like that i don't use clamps i find it really really hard to use clamps like they just don't stay so hair bands are always a winner um and uh yeah so medium to large because they just kind of like fit everybody. I would say that it's, 
I mean, I would say that most of my ladies that come in are probably between a size 12 and 16 um, UK size. So I think that that just works quite well. So yeah. And I always buy maternity dresses so that they're always going to fit people. So it's great. Yeah. Makes it nice and easy. Well, mm. there you go. That's amazing. The white dress sounds like the one main one to have. Yeah, but some people don't like white. So like you do have to decide whether that's in your style or not as well. Like I wouldn't just buy a white dress because I said so. Like you have to make sure that that's actually beneficial to your brand and what you like to do. <laughs> I don't like white. Like grey good as well. Like grey good colour to have. It's very neutral. I mean, I would say like having like neutral colours is always a good place to start. Um, but then if you're like a really colourful photographer and that's what your clients love, then buy a colourful one. It really is down to you and your personality and what you're trying to sell. You know what I mean? I'm with like, you on that. What's important to you? Like, I mean, I've got a girl that I trained a couple of years ago from New York and she's amazing and she just does so much colour. You know, she'll just like do pink on yellow and it looks great because that's her style. Whereas if I did that, people would be like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Like that wouldn't fit my brand, but for her, it's incredible. So yeah, she used what I taught her and made it into her own, which is exactly what I always try and do. So, yeah. I think it's really important that people do that because I don't think you'll ever be truly happy being someone else. And oh, everything can be tweaked. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I feel like, like especially with my training, I think that some people, not, not everyone, but I think some people come into my training and they just kind of like, they they want to know exactly what I do so they can reproduce it. And obviously I see a lot of that, but I understand why, but you just can't, you can't try and be someone else. For me, like, I would hope that my students come to me because they want to better themselves and they want to take the inspiration. So they want to see, you know, the good light in and they, they want to see how my brain works so they can relate it back to their work. Um, you know, that's kind of what I always hope for. Uh, I just think that if you try and be someone else, you'll just never, ever be happy. Like, you haven't got my brain. Like, you, like me, like, okay, my story, I'm always, I was a singer-songwriter, I was a performer. When I wanted to create my photography brand, it looks like people are on stage because I'm so dramatic and it's, it's a very theatrical thing, you know. You normally see me with no clothes on, so my clients most of the time have no clothes on because they're, they're like me. Do you know what I mean? So, like, if you're a, a more introverted photographer, you should use that to your advantage because you will then get more introverted people coming to you and enjoy that whereas introverted people don't really come to me I get the people that think they're shy and then within 10 minutes they're naked do you know what I mean like those <laughs> um, because I bring that out of them whereas that might not work for someone who's a bit shyer do you know what I mean so you, you really have to embrace yourself and I think that like I mean I'm not trying to be patronizing to all the young photographers or the young people watching but when you turn 30, it honestly is the biggest turning point ever. Like I had like a literal mental breakdown. I mean, I'm 32 this year and I still feel like I'm there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that you just realize, you think, oh my God, I'm getting older. Like this, this can't carry on. Like I've got to be myself. Okay. Yeah. I accept the fact that I'm a little brat. Yes. I accept the fact that I'm aggressive and I'm impatient, but you know what? That is maybe the person that I am. And if you don't like it, you don't have to like me. That's fine. Do you know what I mean? But for me, like I use that to you know empower people because i want them to be amazing i'm like come on let's do it whereas not everyone's like that do you know what i mean so you do you just have to like be yourself and embrace those things you know like my family for example are scared of telling me stuff because they know i'm going to tell them straight they're like oh no i can't tell tasha and i'm like what <laughs> you're going to tell me straight i'm like exactly do you know what i mean and That's i'm just the whole point. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like just accepting yourself for who you are. It's so important. Like so uh, important. one of my best friends is like that. I will literally, I know when I go to her, she is like this. It's this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, people in your life that are gonna tell you things that you don't want to hear. Like, I mean, me, I mean, I thrive off people giving me compliments. Like, if you want to tell me that I'm beautiful all day long, I will be your best mate. Like I really will. I'll be like, <gasps> like I thrive on it. Like it literally makes me happy. Like to to get compliments con constantly. I could live like that. But my my friends, my real real friends, are the people that literally call me out on on, on my behaviour. Like they're the people that like tell me straight. If I said, "What's this photo like? Is it competition worthy?" and they're like, mm, "It's not really your best work." I'm like. <sighs> I have a little TT, as people have started calling it, a Tasha tantrum. And then I realized that they're right. <laughs> I 
And that's what I need in my life. Like I need people to tell me, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, I can't. And to run. understand you're going to have a moment and then you'll be okay again. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> People have been saying, oh, I'm going to have a TT. Like, it's become a thing, apparently. Oh, I've not heard that. <laughs> but look, I mean, this is why I haven't entered competitions this year. I, I honestly am not in the right place for people to tell me my work is crap. I just can't do it at the moment. Like, I used to enter so many competitions and obviously it's really helped me on my journey. They're frustrating, don't get me wrong. And it is pot look who the judges, judges are. Like, honestly, it really is. And um, it, it is what it is, right? You you are so passionate about your work. And it, us as artists, we're so sensitive. We're so creative. And it like it, it makes us so emotional. And like we put our work in to literally be pulled apart. That's a really, really brave thing to do. I can't do it this year. I just can't. I've got too much going on. I've got clients coming out my ears, so it doesn't matter how good my work is in competition. They all think it's amazing, and that is what counts. But I just can't do it. Like I just like I feel you like have to be in the right headspace, don't you? Really do. Competitions do not define you. I've seen it so many times that like, people are so upset, me included. I'm not just saying this is just talking from personal experience, and like it sometimes it doesn't make sense to you or other people. But, you know, competitions just are what they are. Like, it's a bit of glass. Mate, I bought my own trophy last year. Didn't you do that in January? Yeah, so at the Guild. <laughs> I'm sure you did that. At the Guild. And I was like, I need to do that. <laughs> I did well. I did well. I had so many photos in the maternity final. I had a couple of photos in the final. I came second in, I think it was families I think and obviously I was really happy with that because I was like wow that's great but like maternity is my thing like it's my thing and I get really like no one can beat me in maternity like no one can beat me in my head I'm like no one can beat me but bloody Eva White with her amazing photo beat me and I was like fair enough it's an amazing photo and I came second but I was just like I'm still gutted because like maternity is my thing and like, I, like I'm not gonna lie like I'm well emotional when people beat me if they're amazing photos, I accept it. I'm like, fine, it was better than mine, whatever, that's fine. But I still feel so disappointed in myself. But that's because, that's because of my life. That's because I'm like in the head a little bit from it. But like, if I don't get like, if I'm not the best at something that I work so hard at, it really affects me. So just to make myself feel better, I found the website where the trophies come from and I just made my own trophy. Just for myself. <laughs> for myself. For my oh, I honestly thought it was brilliant. I um, I must admit, I've really managed to take, I'm not sure I can tell anybody how, but oh bless. I've really managed to, um, hi, take my that little personal little. part. Yeah. Go on then. Go to the living room. Go on. Go on. Oh, bless. No, just, it doesn't matter that the door's broke. Go on. Go on then, you fix it, boy. Go on then. <laughs> oh, bless him. He's got your blue eyes, isn't he? I know. He's actually got my face. He's just not got my eyebrows anymore because they've changed since I was little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone said that um, has entering competitions helped me as a photographer. Oh, definitely yeah. helped me as a photographer. It's definitely uh, made me a bit more thick-skinned. Um, I've, I've come on a very, very long journey since entering my first competition. It's helped me like figure out my lighting. It's helped me become a bit more of a perfectionist with what I do. Like it really has. Go and get your toys then. Go on. Go on. So yeah, it has definitely, definitely helped me. I mean, it's, it's. I've always got a checklist in my head, and obviously, not every, not every image is competition worthy. But I want to give my clients the best gallery that I possibly can, and I feel like by entering competitions, that has definitely helped me. Like, I will look at something and be like, oh, where's the hand? Like, is that fi are those fingers connected to a hand which is connected to a limb? Oh, is the foot right? You know, like, is the lighting right? Where are the catch lights? Like, just things like that that I probably wouldn't have thought about five years ago. I now think about, like, just automatically. And I do think it's definitely helped me as a photographer. It's also given me a lot of confidence. Um, but I would say that mostly, like, with, it, with competitions, it's made me have a bit more of a thick skin basically yeah. so yeah it, you it, have to not take them personally because no. competitions are so different to your client work um, 
that's just right. Right. Um, and I know personally from competitions while uh, uh, Natasha goes off, um, it's it's made me be more creative mm. often, the competitions, because yeah. I'll maybe go and do an idea that I was like, mm, do I really need to do that? But then I'll be like, right, no, no, let's try this new idea because yeah. it could push the boundaries a bit more. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, like, I mean, I'm struggling at the moment, I'll be honest, because I feel like my work doesn't have as much impact anymore. Because obviously I teach what I do and so many other people are now doing what I'm doing. I feel like so many images are now being like entered into competition that I've either done three years ago or two years ago. And for me, I want to be very true to myself and I don't want to change my style just to win a competition. Like I would never make myself someone else just to win. And so because everyone, like a lot of people are doing what I do now, it, it, I'm struggling a bit more, like I'll be honest. And like, I think that it's definitely affected my social media as well. So I am trying to figure out what I want to do. I mean, I could carry on like as I am and be very, very happy, but I am never satisfied and I've always got to be better than I was last week. Do you know what I mean? Like if my photo, I mean, I still struggle to send galleries to clients. Like literally, like I, it still takes me a day or two to get the confidence to send them the link because I am literally, and I'll literally be honest with you, I still get scared that they're gonna reply back to me and say that they're not happy. Never really had it. Obviously you have a few like crazy clients over the years, but I mean like, you know, I, I, the fact that when people email me back and they're like, oh my God, I cannot believe what you've done for me. You've made me feel amazing. I can't believe these photos. Even even after near enough, every single client sends me that email back. I'm still like, are these perfect enough? And that definitely comes with how I where I am now in my business. And because I go around the world teaching, I have a lot of pressure on me constantly. And so like, you know, sometimes I feel like, should I have done that? Should I have even taken that step and done that? Because now I'm like struggling to like, well, you think like, I go to America, I turn up in a studio I've never seen before in my life. I turn up with lights I've never used before in my life. I don't know whether my models are gonna come because I'm in a completely different country and I'm just praying that they turn up. I've got like 17, 18 people watching me and they're like, go on then be perfect. Be perfect, produce what you always produce. And I'm like, Shit. do you know what I mean? That is literally what yeah. I do. And I'm like, every time I do it, it obviously it's, I, I'm a performer, I'm, it's fine. Put me on stage and say, go on, talk to people. I'm like, okay, cool, so I can do it. But the fact that like, you have to just be perfect all the time is a lot of pressure. So on, on Instagram, for example, I could share every client gallery that I do because every client gallery for me is, is, is the best it could be. You know, this isn't me just showing you my best work. The only, the only reason why I don't show every client gallery, like every single photo from every client gallery on Instagram is because it's their galleries. And I don't want to be like, you know, pushy and share everything. But like, you know, and also I have to make sure that there's, a, there's enough versatility. Jax, I need you to be quiet, babe, okay? Because I told you I'm on live, look. I'm on live. I've got people watching. You have to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> He's here. Yeah. Do you want to sit on my lap for a second? Okay. He hasn't had his hair done by the barbers for a long time. Um, yeah, you know, like I, I share, so I've got versatility in my um, on my Instagram, but people are so much more quicker to judge somebody like me if something's not completely perfect. Do you know what I mean? So, which do you know is such a shame that you feel you have to be perfect. It is I such know. a shame but because I don't think anybody is. Like, no, there's no. nobody in this world. No, no, anywhere no. who is perfect. But you know what I mean? It's like it's so much pressure because of like where I am now in the business, and because I travel around, and because I teach people. Like, if I put someone in, or something on Instagram and someone don't like it, they will bloody tell me now. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, that isn't good enough. And I'm like, but it is. It is. How do you find you handle that? Basically, I just think, well. What a shame for you that you've had to spend the time to tell me that because my clients would do it, so go away. Because <laughs> okay. I know this is a huge fear of people's, of all photographers, because like you say, we work from the heart. Everything we give is from the heart. Yeah. And I know it's a huge fear of photographers, that judgment, that somebody commenting and going, we hate your work yeah. is 
a huge thing. I mean, I think it's rude anyway when you post on your Instagram and someone puts that underneath your image. If you really want to do it, message me because I think it's yeah. just rude because a client can see it. But I get a lot of trolls. So I mean, I've got I've got quite a few followers now, and I get a lot of trolls when I and I obviously um, read every single comment. So like one for one, I'm so grateful for all the support and when people share my work and they share my reels and things like that. Like that is just very humbling and you know i always feel like really grateful for that but i it comes with having people telling you crap all the time like oh i can't believe you've got this woman naked how disgusting mate i'm like right back on there with that like like their body their choice their body their choice do you know what i mean so yeah it's like it's just it you just have to it, it, I don't know, you just have to have a thick skin. I mean, social media is so crazy. Like, you really have to just, like, forget about the people that don't like it. Do you know what I mean? You just have to forget about it. Just move on. Just try not to let it affect you because they're just keyboard warriors. I find it funny sometimes. I've messaged them before <laughs> and asked them if they're okay. <laughs> I honestly what? think people have to be so angry and so sad to sit there and slate people or jealous. They must have to be jealous to sit there and slate people. I just oh, it's funny. It's funny. Like, I, I, was, I take a different approach on it. Like when I had like I photographed this girl and she was absolutely stunning. And um she was in a purple dress. It was like the first time I used this dress. I was so excited. The photo was so beautiful, she looked amazing. But she had red nail polish on, and obviously for you know, for clients, I'm not really bothered. Like, if they want red nail polish, I'm great. If it was a competition image, I would have took their red nail polish off, like, you know, desaturated it a little bit. But, you know, like, if it was a client image. Like, it's fine. Like, she doesn't care. And I, everyone was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I was getting such good comments. And then someone just commented underneath, this red nail polish is disgusting or something. And I just, like, burst out laughing. I was like, wow, like find the negative won't you and i just find it so funny and i just like i, I put like I, I think i commented underneath with like laughing crying face emojis like yeah i know but it's a client image like calm down <laughs> and where she think you know the client's gonna see that i just i know that's what it, that's why it knows them and that's why i really come like that because you know my clients don't deserve it like i was having a bit of a, a war with someone on facebook like recently um so one of my clients which oh my god she was amazing she I, I did this mini session for her and she was so brave and she put the photos on her facebook and you know she was getting such good comments and then on one of the photos this guy just put scary like and i was like what and i just kind of commented back and just said you know like if you've got something like if you've got like a bad opinion like it'd be better if you didn't say that like she's so brave and so beautiful and like you know she's posted this on there to empower herself and you've just like tried to knock her down a few pegs and he's like oh wind your effing neck in like i'm doing I'm, I'm just having some banter with her and i was like it's not banter you don't know how it affects people like no, no like, i'm not having it i'm not having it like i will I will literally have my clients backs in everything. I'm like your biggest cheerleader. Anyone's got anything to say, I will I will say something back to them. Whether you whether they think they're joking or not, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Good, yeah. good, because it's not fair on them. It's not fair on anybody. We all talk about being, you know, nice to each other and then you wander into a social media place and, and it seems to change. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which upsets like, me quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, social media is incredible. Like, it's really obviously helped my business. I, I probably wouldn't have a workshop business without it. Um, and I do love teaching. I mean, I don't teach, like, that much anymore. Really. I mean, obviously, I've got, like, a few tours and stuff. But I don't teach, like, every month or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, like, I do love teaching. But I wouldn't have had that. wouldn't have had that. And I would have inspired so many people without social media. But I mean, like I used to just do little Facebook stuff and I had so many clients when I first started because it was all just recommendations. But social media has given me that platform to actually, I don't really have a lot of people that know someone else that's come to me anymore. They found me from oh, like, okay. yeah, like when I first started, it was all recommendations. It was all like that person's sister and that person's friend or they'd seen like their friends on Facebook, things like that. But now... I'm getting a lot more of my clients. They've never met anyone that's come to me before. They're like completely new people. And that is amazing because what it's done is opened the door for me to um, 
photograph like so many different people from so many different cultures, which obviously is so interesting for me. And it's it, like literally just excites me so much. So when people bring like cultural clothes in, for example, that's absolutely amazing. What are you asking me to do? It's tangled up. Oh, okay, here you go. <laughs> so hang on, and this on. is the life of this a is... mum and photographer. <laughs> <laughs> He's with me on third Wednesdays and Thursdays. There you go. Go and the living room, then. Good boy. You're welcome. So you know, it's yeah, it's a it's it's a good and a bad thing. You know, like I think that if you go on social media, you have to have like a thick skin, but also it is an amazing platform, and you should use it if you can. Yeah, and you need to time yourself. I think because you can spend too long on there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. Says every every single person watching and us are going, yeah. yeah. It's addictive though. It's so addictive. I mean, I've noticed a big fall in reach the last two weeks. Like it's really annoyed me. Like when it first happened. I mean, like for me, like to get like like guys, you have to you have to remember this is in comparison. So if you think I've got fifty seven thousand followers and I'm saying this, okay. So like if I get a thousand likes on a photo, that's average for me. Like that's good. That's fine. Right. If I get 2000, it's reached a lot of people. That's amazing. Anything more than that is like, whoa, okay. That's crazy. If I get 500 likes on a photo, that's actually really, like, really bad for me. Like, obviously, I appreciate the 500 people that have liked it. And if you put 500 people in a room, that's still a lot of people. But, like, in comparison, when you look at the percentage, it dropped a lot. And I'm not doing anything different. So I don't know what's going on. And I've actually ended up doing more reels to try and get people. But then my reels are getting loads and loads of views, but no one's liking them anymore. So I don't know what's going on. So I would normally get. I don't know, like between 800 and 1,500 likes on a reel, now I'm getting 500. So I'm wondering what's going on, but you know, still reaching people, you know, people are still viewing them. I'm still getting a lot of people messaging me saying how funny they are and that, you know, they crack them up and you know what, that's fine. But I think that the algorithm's changed a lot on Instagram lately and um, I'm just trying to figure it out to be honest, I don't really know. Facebook's the same as well, in all honesty. In fact, yeah. I've just noticed my Facebook is literally dive bombed. And yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't, don't know. know. It works. It has. It work. It doesn't work for others. And like, I think that you just have to kind of keep going and just hope that it picks up again. I've just started my TikTok again, which is actually hilarious. Like, honestly, I love doing the TikToks. I literally do them for me to watch myself because they're so cool. I know it's crazy. And then it's a really good platform as well. Um, but I mean, I haven't really got that many followers on there. Like, I'm not really getting like loads of views or anything at the moment. But they, it does crap me up. I'm trying to relate it back to all my photography stuff. Um, but yeah, that's that's really funny. But yeah, and I mean, with your background yeah. that must be super fun. What was like, that? So you, with your background, that must yeah. be super fun because of everything you've done before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, it's just a bit. You know, sometimes you just have to take it with a pinch of salt and just think. You know what? Like the main thing is like I'm not struggling for bookings. So if I'm struggling for bookings, I'll be trying to figure out more stuff. But I think I just had to have my little tantrum for a week and wonder what the hell was going on and then think, you know what, it's really not that much of a big deal. Like, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. I've still got lots of work, got lots of people booking still. It's fine. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? You're the, you're the first time I've ever had spam come up on my thing that I'm just blocking. You know, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had that come up on a YouTube before. I'm like, oh, quick, get rid of it. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> Um, do you not do in-person sales, someone's asking? No, so, um, I mean, me and my wife, Maggie, <laughs> my work wife, Maggie, she she would completely disagree with me because she's like a massive um, advocate for in-person sales and I, I understand why. But, I mean, for me, like, it just... So if I did in-person, I do a lot of mini sessions and they really work for me and they're 45 minutes, you know, we do, we create five amazing photos. They get those five amazing photos and that's, that's it. I don't upsell, nothing like that. Like that's what I do. And it works great for me, works around the kids. Like, and I'm happy with that. If I had to do a full 15 image session for every single client that came in, I would have to find, I do six, I do five to six sessions a week. So I will be looking to find an extra, maybe four hours a week to shoot it. Then I would be having to find an extra, probably, five, six hours to edit more images. And then I would have to find another five to six hours to sell them, to bring them back. 
I don't have that extra 15 hours. I just, I just don't have that 15 hours. So like, having watched you, I don't think you have any extra time. No, do you? So like, that's why I don't do it. Um, I understand why people do. And honestly, I think it's amazing. And, but for me, it just don't work for me. I just, it, it would work for me if I did it, if I had, if I had extra time, but I just can't, and I, I don't really want to employ someone else to do my sales because then I become more of like, you know, a salesy photographer. And for me, like, I just want to create amazing images. I just want an easy life. People tell me how many images they want before they come. They tell me what they want to do. And we just create that many images in the session. I show them on the back of the camera. They say that they're happy with it. And I'm like, great. And I edit them and then they get them and that's it. I don't have to do anything else. And I know what I'm doing. You know, like I get paid on the day. It's just fine. You know, like for me that that's, that's where my heart lies and that's what makes me happy. And you know, like no one, no one can tell you what's right or wrong in your business. If it's working for you, it's working for you. If it's not, you've got to find out why and make something work for you like a different way. So for me, this works for me and I just, you know, I don't want to change it. So yeah, it's. And I think that's super yeah. important because you all do have to work. You know, yeah. I've coached people who want to do the, you know, 20 sessions plus a week. And you know, me, I do one session a week. That's yeah. all I want. You yeah. know, I do a three to four hour session on a Sunday with a car or a bike. And, and I do what you do. I create the piece of art that we've pre-talked about yeah. and pre-sold. And I know how it's working. Yeah. And yeah, I think I think it can work whether it's it's non-salesy or you, you do the in-person sales. Because I don't. I do them, but I do them via Zoom because I yeah. You know, I know you have people fly over from America, don't you, to have sessions right. with you? Yeah. How are you meant to do a viewing yeah. after that? <laughs> no, and, and, and also, I get people travel from all over the country and Europe to come and have their photos done with me. Like, for me to be able just to create that piece of work so they don't have to come back to me. I mean, even on Zoom, like, I don't know, like, I just, like... It, it, it's 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 the thing isn't it you know you say you haven't got time but like when I've worked it out I physically don't have time for that and I'm not prepared to give up anything else in my life to add that in and like for me like it's a good balance like it just works I'm happy with it so like I'm just gonna carry on doing that so yeah <laughs> I don't know what okay. is. that's crazy maybe it's because I said the word naked I wonder if that's what it was. It's picked up. I know. <laughs> the word naked. Mad. It's I've never me. had that before. I just I keep blocking them. It's fun. <laughs> it's actually fun. If you could give someone, if any photographer, a kind of like bit of advice that you feel that you maybe didn't learn straight away from being, what would it be? Oh, do you know what? It's hard. Like, there's quite a lot of things that I would say. Like, Firstly, I would say learn lighting. Like it's so important. Like it comes, it comes above and beyond everything. And like if you don't get your lighting right, you, you can't you can't create anything because light is the the most important thing, really. Um, and also just to be yourself. Like that is probably the thing that I say all the time to people: is be yourself. And once you've found yourself, you then need to be consistent. If you're like dotting around doing all these different things, one, it like muddles your brain. Two, you can't be good at everything. And three, none of your clients know what to expect. So they never know what they're really going to get out of you. And so like then they could end up being disappointed because, you know, their end images aren't really what they thought they were going to be. Like for me, everybody knows like how the images are going to turn out. You know what I mean? Like they know that that's the style and that's how it's going to be. So, yeah, I don't know. Like being consistent is so important. Um, yeah, and like just to be yourself. Like you don't have to do maternity if you don't like it. Like you don't have to do cake smash if you don't like it. And I mean, when I first started out, I photographed everything because you do have to fail to succeed. You know, you do have to do those things that you don't like to realize you don't like them. You know, I always say like, don't knock it till you try it. You know what I mean? So I don't like shooting landscapes. Like I like to look at them. But there's no way that I have the patience to stand there for six hours to wait for the sun to be in the right place. Mate, I would have left and gone drinking. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no way that I could do that. But some people, that's where their heart lies. And that's amazing. And that's where you, you know, that, that's good. And like weddings, I love doing weddings, but there was just no space anymore for them. You know, there was no, yeah. I love doing them. And the joy that I used to bring to people was amazing. But for me, it was like, 
my husband never saw me. My kids never saw me. I was editing until like 4 a.m. like every bloody day trying to like get all these photos over to people. Like I just didn't have the space in my life anymore for them. And as much as my clients, like my now clients, like ask me, please do my wedding, please. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I've still got- You're better than me. You're <laughs> so much better than me. Cause they get me with their eyes and they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I just think it's going to be all right. Like last year, I actually ended up cancelling some weddings. And I just thought like, you know, like in this life, like self, the word selfish is awful, apparently. Apparently it's awful it's to be selfish. And I feel like it's not, okay? Like you have to do things for yourself. You are only on this planet for a very short amount of time. And if you're living just to please other people constantly, how are you ever gonna be happy? I just honestly, like, you're just never gonna be happy. And like, I always say to people, I'm like, in order for me not to hurt myself, you know, I have to kind of hurt you. And like, what, you know, like, I don't wanna hurt you, but I also don't wanna sacrifice my happiness just to please everyone else all the time. So, you know, like, obviously that you have to find a balance in that, like doing things for other people is amazing, obviously. But, you know, like in some things, like, no, like, like last year, like Vegas and um, I, my US tour was supposed to be in August. And obviously it got pushed back because of Corona and whatever, but I'd canceled like three weddings in order to go and do that. And at the beginning, like if you'd have asked me four years ago to cancel a wedding, I would never have canceled a wedding. I've traveled all the way to Cornwall on a family holiday and come back for the day just because I didn't want to cancel a wedding and then drove all the way back to my family holiday. You know what I mean? Like I have done yeah. things like that because I didn't want to let people down. But like, as I got older, I was a bit like, mate, it's going to be fine. Like I can find other photographers for them or, you know, like it's not a big deal. Like, like sometimes you have to put your happiness in front of other people's. Oh, like you really do. Like, oh, you know, like my kids always come first. My husband comes first, whatever. That's fine. But you have to, you have to love yourself and you have to treat yourself with a bit of love as well. Otherwise, how the hell are you going to give it to other people? I don't know. Just be sad it's, just... it's just I'm with you I think oh, it's God. that um I always say you're not exchanging you're not you're not necessarily exchanging stuff for money mm. you're exchanging yeah. it for time your life yeah. part of your life is what you're exchanging it for your shoot or whatever you're agreeing to say yes to you're not exchanging it for finances you're not exchanging it for money you're exchanging it for part of your life yeah that you will not get back yeah. I mean, like, you know, when we photograph toddlers, for example, and it's a chaotic session because they're like one and a half, they don't understand what you want, blah, 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 blah. I have left sessions thinking I am not photographing that age again. I just can't do it to myself. But, right, I edit the images and the images that I get for the moms, that overrides the fact that that age is hard. So I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I have to still give this to people because the joy that it gives to people overrides the fact that I've just found that a bit chaotic for, for an hour. Do you know what I mean? Like me losing time with my family, editing till 3 a.m., um, always being constantly tired over wedding editing, for example, that had to go. Do you know what I mean? Like that was something that had to go. Me doing cake smashes and having to find a cake and, you know, doing all that, that had to go. I don't, I don't need that in my life. Me concentrating on the mom even though she's got a 15 month old, that's fine. Because yes, it's chaotic for an hour, but that's all it was for me. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Like the actual images that I did back gave something to me as well, because I'm like, look what you've just got. Look at these photos. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, was, that was different. And so you have to figure out what you're, you know, you're happy to put up with in order to yeah. feel, you know, to give someone something. If that makes sense. And I think that's super important because if you're not happy, guys, there's just no point in doing it. The reason we're self-employed is so we can live the life we want to live. And yeah. so we can, you know, spend more time with, for some people, the kids, for others, the gym or whatever it is. You yeah. know, that, that's what we're doing it for. That's why we're self-employed. Yeah. Don't forget that along the way because a lot of us forget that along the way. And we feel like we have to, we're just doing it you know we feel like we have to work seven days a week 12 hours days and we might as well go back to working a nine to five if we're not going to be yeah. happy yeah definitely definitely yeah, really really important 
I think um, so then five to five would be easier sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I wouldn't give it up for the world. Like I really wouldn't. And um, since I've just built my studio, at home, well, I didn't build it. Like, I'm not a builder. But like since I renovated my double garage, and you know, like I work from home. Like oh my god, I love it. And you know, so many people were like so against it. They were like, I can't believe that you're going to work from home. I would never do that. Like I used to work from home. I used to hate it. I'm like, mate my life I love my life now like it's such a long journey to go outside my front door to my studio now. <laughs> such a long journey like I love it I absolutely love working out of and my you garage. can spend longer at the gym because you're not right. traveling as far to work <laughs> yeah, you know I, love? I come back to the house I go and put the heating on and then I jump in the shower and I'm literally in the shower 15 minutes before my clients about to arrive because it's already settled it's so much better I love it I love it yeah. So good. <laughs> I much prefer working from home now to mm. um what I used to do with yeah the studios and stuff it's just so much easier yeah. um if anybody has any last questions let us know because we're gonna finish up because uh Natasha's given us an amazing amount of her time as you can tell she's so busy <laughs> so uh I, it's really appreciative and you've all managed to hear a bit of her story um, and the fact that she still has the imposter syndrome that everybody else has. Oh, yeah. Everyone does. I feel like I feel like creative people usually do have that because you just always want to, you know, give the best. And sometimes you think, is this actually OK? And like you just feel like you're always being um, what's the word, you know, like validated all the time. It's like you've always got to have that validation to like make you realize that you're still good enough. Do you know what I mean? And. I don't know, like maybe it's the ADHD, maybe it's the creative part of me, maybe it's the fact that I basically got told I was going to be famous my whole life for singing and then it never happened, I don't know. I don't know what's happened in my brain, but like I think we all get it. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I still think I'm good enough, but, you know, we all have moments of doubt. Like, we, we're human, like we really are, and insecurities are fine. I mean, as long as you use those insecurities for the good and not the bad, I think it, you know, it, it can help. It can help. Imposter syndrome, we are actually in two of the top categories to get it. Um, yeah. Creatives is one, and self employed people, people that work on their own as self employed, is the second. Uh, in in the top five categories for imposter syndrome. So we like honestly we are so up there for getting it all the time. And mm. I think sometimes we have to remember that it's part of our lives and actually it's okay. It's not a bad thing. If yeah. you weren't, would you feel that um, you were doing a good enough job? Because if you don't get out your comfort zone and feel yeah. like an imposter, are you growing? The you problem know? with beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There's so many different artists and, you know, photographers out there. You're not going to like everything. And I think that, like, because we take it so personally, because we literally put our heart and soul into it, if someone said to us, I'm not really keen on that, it hurts. It's not like you can say, like, you know, like, people don't like black or they don't like red or, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't mean that the colour red isn't beautiful to some people. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, I don't know. Like, I think you just have to, like, take it as a pinch of salt. Like, with a pinch of salt, I mean, not as a pinch of salt. That'd be weird. Um, oh. <laughs> it's that saying, isn't it, where you, yeah. uh, I heard where if somebody rang you and you had no clue who they were and they went, I'm never going to speak to you again, and you put it down, you would have no care in the world. No, exactly. But if it was someone you really appreciated and loved and it would then trigger you and that's the same yeah. thing, our work we love, we love what we do, we love our work, we have a passion for it, Definitely. whereas if we didn't have an emotion attached to it, we would never feel that way. Yeah, you'd never create so, anything, you should never be passionate enough to do it, so like it just comes with pros and cons but is what it is. Um, actually, I just asked a really good question actually about um, how I got the money to open up my own studio. Do you know what? I didn't have the money to open up my studio. I just did it and thought about it later and thought, well, I obviously need to do better to, to afford it. And actually, my, um, my husband pushed me into doing it. He was like, you'll be fine. It's just money. You'll be fine. Like, I was like, okay. I was, I was so scared. Like, I was so scared, but like, I just had to do it. And like, I mean, I worked in it, as I said, I worked in like a like a horrible, disgusting studio that was definitely haunted. Okay. And like, <laughs> and people got robbed outside. And like, it was just, but honestly, like, the place was so trampy. But I kept it for four years and people kept coming back. They didn't care. 
you know what I mean? Like, it's not about the studio. Like, if you don't have enough money to open up the studio, work from your house and pay your dues until you do have enough money to open up your studio. You know what I mean? I haven't just got here magically. Like, I've worked my ass off. I've worked my ass off to get where I am now. I work so hard. And I try and work hard at most areas of my life. You know, you can't work hard at every area, but I try my hardest. And I work my ass off too. Like, when I got my studio, my old studio, I just, I, I cried when I left there because it was just so amazing to, to have that. And I left it and then I came to my studio at home. Like, you know, it's a journey. It's really a journey. Like, I've got my 10 year anniversary next year when I, when I started my business. But obviously I've been doing photography for a lot longer than that. But yeah, you know, like it's, it didn't happen by magic. It happened because I worked hard. Do you know what I mean? Like I got the people in and I did a good job. And that's how I that's how I afforded it because I worked hard. <laughs> and you I know. don't know if it helps, but my first studio because I used to have a high street studio, family portrait studio. I also didn't have the money to open it, but I did. Yeah. And it yeah. almost makes you step it up. You yeah. have to. You've got no choice. You've put yourself in that situation. Yeah. You know, have to work your ass off. Yeah, I had to pay like it was about five hundred quid a month or something. So I knew I was going to have to do at least like one session to cover that. You know, and every month I thought, right, I need one session a month just to cover that. And then to then I would figure out how much um, how much my bills were for like, you know, at home and my car and things like that. And I'd be like, and then I need this X amount of sessions to cover my bills. Yeah. And then anything after that is extra for me and the kids to go and do whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like I worked out how much I needed personally to make it work. And that's what I had to make sure I covered every month. You know, like I just kind of did it like that. Pricing is very personal. Um, me and Paulina talk about this on our, on our workshops when we go abroad about you don't have to charge what everyone else is charging, you know, things like that. Like it's a very personal thing. And if you're happy with how much you're charging, that's fine. You don't have to like follow a, a trend or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you just do what you want to do. It's your business. Like. Mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent with that because I see so many people wanting to to copy someone else's business and that's not who you are. Yeah. Go be you. Like my fees now are completely different to what I was in a high street studio. I was like, can I even remember like 35 quid for a session? Yeah. And like now with what I do, it's 495 for a session. Yeah. And it's the complete opposite of end of the spectrum of what I do. But especially yeah. I think if you niche. And you become that consistent niche that you were talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, and it depends on how many sessions you want to do and what you yeah. want to do. And definitely, I mean, like, I mean, I do between five, between four and six sessions a week. But some of them are mini sessions. Some of them are five images. Do you know what I mean? So like, I love doing, I love doing mini sessions. When someone comes into me and they want fifteen photos, I'm like, fifteen photos. You know what I mean? I'm like, God, I wish they were having 10. Do you know what I mean? Like, because that's, that's my happy place. Like, between five and 10 is my happy place. Um, obviously, I'm happy to do 15. And to be honest, I probably could do 15 for everybody because there's so much that, that you can do. But, you know, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. Just do what makes you happy. Like, that's all that, that's all that matters. So, I yeah, I, mean, I, I get told all the time how cheap I am. They're like, you're so cheap, especially from the Americans, my American beautiful people. They're always like, you're so cheap. And I'm like, I'm not, though, in the UK. Like, in the UK, I'm just pretty average. Like, you know, I'd say that I'm definitely the, one of the most expensive, like, where I live. Do you know what I mean? And that's very special. And, like, people save up to come to me, and that means a lot. But I'm definitely, like, not too – I would say that I'm definitely not too cheap. But I suppose compared to some other people, I really would be. But if I lived in London, it would be different. Like, I would need to charge a lot more because everything else would be more expensive. But I live in Telford now, you know what I mean? I live in Shropshire. Like, it's fine. Like, I don't need to charge, like, three grand a session to afford to live. Like And I'm America as well. They have a completely different thing. I mean, they're, money they're money ain't everything like I'm happy like if I get to buy the odd designer bag once a year like that makes that's fine I don't I don't need a lot of stuff like I mean I do love material things obviously like we all do but you know like they're really not going to make us happy you know what I mean like for me like it's just being comfortable and you know getting time for myself sometimes and that's the most important thing as long as I can pay my bills and you know I can buy my kids stuff sometimes and you know like you know we've got food on the table and so I suppose that's all that really matters you know what I mean so for me it's shoes you know some shoes yeah, yeah. 
you know what growing up I never had anything designer my mom and dad like had no money like growing up they you know like they literally spent everything on us and like I think that's another reason like when I went to theatre school for example like I got a scholarship to go so they didn't have to pay for the fees but it was still so expensive sending me on trains and the uniform and everything they put everything into me do you know what I mean and and like I think I always just felt like I just didn't want to live like that I like I wanted to give something back to them and I wanted to you know I don't know like and so when I first when I bought my first pair of designer shoes which I don't do a lot by the way I was so like wow like I've achieved that do you know what I mean like this year I managed to take my whole family and I paid for it myself on a two-week all-inclusive holiday and I just thought to myself oh my gosh like I have worked so hard for this and it means something, do you know what I mean? It means something. And whether that was and like, it would be like a, a Cornwall holiday down, well, it's pretty, probably expensive to get a bloody caravan, but you know, whether that's right like, now, yeah. <laughs> like, whether that's like you being able to afford to take your kids to Alton Towers and you've never been able to do that before, or whether that's going on a holiday, like that is an achievement. That's something that's yeah. never been done before. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've just got to be, you've just got to try and think, oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. And you make know? sure you do that, guys, because too many people don't cheer themselves up. Yeah. They don't say, oh, my God, I've managed to achieve. And it could even be I've managed to pay my bills for the last two months or one month or whatever it is. You've got to celebrate yourself because you're just going to keep dragging yourself down if you don't. Yeah, I feel like we're, a lot of us are, you know, where me, I mean, I am definitely, definitely a booger for this but. Like I am always wanting more. Like I'm all, I'm never really satisfied with what I've got. You know, I always think I need the next thing. I need to be better. Da, 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 da. Huh? Okay. I'll go and put it back on for you in a minute. I'm nearly done. So I, I think that we have to kind of take a step back sometimes and appreciate the little things. And that is, that's, the, that's really, really important because we can be the best photographer in the world. And I always say this about my workshop business. I'm teaching people now, but in five years, no one's gonna really care. They will have moved on to the next person, the next big thing, whatever. That's, and you know what, that is fine. That is fine because I will be proud of what I've achieved in the past. And I'll just be happy, happy little me going to the gym and shooting my clients. However, your photography will always be on the walls of all of your clients for many many years to come exactly. <laughs> the important thing that is the most important thing <laughs> the last question i've got on here is have you oh, have you <laughs> i keep blocking him and he keeps coming back i know it's me <laughs> i'm so crude it's because i talk about sex <laughs> it's <laughs> oh, um, have then. you considered <laughs> have you considered moving from maternity to other areas you know like my whole branding is about women that's what i'm passionate about everything i do is based on the mom or the or the female you know it's all about women empowerment and making them feel incredible um and you know like since i've been going to the gym i have been thinking about doing more power sessions and like more like not fitness related stuff but you know like more I don't know, like, we'll just see. We don't really know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing at the moment. You know, I love doing my maternity. Um, I'm really good at it and people love it and that's fine. But yeah, like, I suppose that like, I could try and start focusing on something else, but I would still want to keep it within my brand. I still would want to keep it all about the girls, all about, you know, there's not enough people rooting for us. So I've got to do it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you so much. I think there's so much stuff in there between mindset, business, um, journeys, all of it. That was really brilliant. And I know we've got people saying, you know, um, thank you. You're such an inspiration to me. And obviously we've got the others above with the, you're the, you are the bomb and all of that stuff. And I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm going to pop your Instagram you. up because I know your Instagram always has um, lots and lots of amazing content, which I love seeing on there. And we didn't even get to your fitness journey today, but you, you're nice. just amazing. <laughs> well, I look I, at you and and I'm like, I, I need to Instagram. Do this. Just do just 
for me really and like to support other moms I get a lot of people messaging me for help and you know like I always say like you can come like to the gym with me I'll show you what to do like obviously I don't charge for it obviously I do, it just brings me a bit of joy it's just a bit of a hobby and you know I'm just happy to help with with that like I've been there like I've been in the dark places I've looked at myself in the mirror and hated who I am and all of that so like I know how it feels so like I'm happy to help other people with that because there's there's really nothing worse than feeling like you've completely lost yourself and you don't know what you don't know what to do and there's all these fad diets out there and and all of that and like you just don't have to do it you just do what not is it? it lemon and coffee will make you <laughs> that's the latest one i think no, I no, the other no. day. <laughs> don't do it please stop starving yourself to lose weight it's really not the way to go oh, <laughs> it's crazy isn't it yeah, do you think going on that journey that fitness journey did that did that have a positive effect on the business yeah definitely like it's made me so confident it's made me so much more confident because one obviously I do stuff for myself so I get like that time two obviously I look better so I'm not like I feel like a bit more like oh I can do this and do this because I'm not so worried about like you know, like, oh my God, this is a role or, you know, like things that stupid stuff really that like the media's told us is wrong or whatever. And then it's also made me like a lot more, I'm much kinder to myself, which makes me a lot kinder to other people at the same time. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's made me like not bothered about bending over and having a little roll. Do you need a wee wee? In a bit, in a bit. So like it's made me kinder We're to myself. almost done little man. <laughs> yeah it's made me kinder to myself and that's very important and it definitely has had a knock-on effect with my clients and you know the person I am basically so yeah if anyone needs any advice and stuff like that like just hit me up on my my fitness page it's just Tasha Ince Fitness yeah I haven't got that one on here sorry guys but I will stick it in the comments on all of the different places I have the lives I will do that for you so that you've got that as well but yeah I just thought I'd ask that because I think that is an important thing to think about is your whole lifestyle affects your yeah. business it's not just what you do marketing and what you do the rest of it it's everything and I will apologize if anybody judges me for not looking at Natasha halfway through most of this but it actually my looking at Natasha is there <laughs> so this is me looking at you on the video which makes me feel like I'm looking off it's really I know. I know. <laughs> mirrored. so I'm not used to seeing myself not mirrored so like when I'm in this way I'm going like the opposite way it's just so weird I just keep looking and then realize that on the video it looks like I'm just ignoring you because I'm staring off into space <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine I don't mind yeah oh, no. Dear. but there we go no thank you so much if anybody is watching in replay you know make sure you go and follow Natasha tell her how awesome she is because she enjoys being told how awesome she is as she really said earlier do. but also just because she is and she is an inspiration you know I think she's running this business amazing business she's traveling all over the world you have kids I mean I don't have kids and I have no idea how you do that bit and you know you it just <laughs> It just amazes me because I struggle with busyness without kids. So I completely, yeah, thank you so much for doing No this. problem. I really, really enjoyed it. I just like hope it's helped someone. And again, like thank you so much for all the support and, you know, the appreciation. Thank you for trusting me with education. Like all of that, like it is very, very humbling and, and it's an amazing thing to do. So thank you to everybody. The naked guy's happy with you. So it's I fine. Know. <laughs> 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 oh dear. anyway right so i'm gonna let you all go and catch up with you soon keep an eye out for the next fun stuff on the youtube if you haven't already you got photographer's mindset on the youtube facebook instagram and 100 percent make sure you're following natasha's journey because it's amazing i was almost swore then and thank i stopped you. myself at the last minute all right <laughs> thank you guys